Hey, it's Andy with IT Supplies. Whenever a customer buys an Epson Solvent S-Series printer, one of our Epson certified technicians comes on site to install the printer. They also spend a few hours training the operators on how to use and maintain their new printer. Oftentimes, after a few days or weeks, that training that was once fresh and exciting has started to get foggy and parts are completely forgotten. In this video, one of our best techs, Mike, is going to provide a refresher course on using the control panel of your Epson Solvent S-Series so that you can get the most out of your new printer. So I'm just going to go over the front panel really quick here and just uh, what each button is and, and what the main functions of them are. So as you can see right here, we have our power button and then this is our pause slash cancel button. So if you are in the middle of a print that you're not happy with, you can cancel it or you can pause it and just let the print head rest and even do a cleaning in the middle of your print if you notice any print quality issues on a longer run. Next we have the roll settings. Next we have our light. This is our in our print zone itself. This is our maintenance button. This is our menu button. So this is uh, all the options above are also within this menu. These are shortcut buttons. This is our temperature control options. And then on the front panel itself, you can see our printer is ready to print. So as you can see, there's a little graphic of a roll. So the three heat zones, there's the preheat, this is the in the print zone heat, and this is the post heat. We're on preset number seven, and then you can see the width of the media that's loaded is 54 inches. And then at the bottom here, we have all of the different inks and the levels on each of these inks. Cleaning cartridge, which can be swapped out for a white cartridge or a metallic silver cartridge. And then CMYK, light cyan, light magenta, light black, red, orange. And then these last two here, this is our waste ink tank. So as this waste ink tank is going down, the actual physical waste ink is filling up. And this last one is our head maintenance kit. When this bar gets down to 90%, it will tell you that you need to replace it soon. And then as soon as it gets down to 100% empty, then it will now no longer allow you to print. And I just want to point out right here, there's also this QR code you can scan to reference any of the Epson provided maintenance videos. Okay, so going back, I'm gonna start with the media settings. So we're gonna go into the media settings here. And these first two options only appear when the printer actually has a roll loaded. So if you don't have anything loaded, you won't see feed to cut position or easy media setup. Feed to cut position is once the printer is done printing, the last print will roll back up and be in a position to start the next print. But if you choose feed to cut position, it will roll the print out of the print zone and it will allow you to cut the, uh, cut the print off. Easy media setup is what you want to go into when you're setting up a new media, a new roll, something you haven't run before. So you can see right now we have our Mid-States photo gloss paper loaded. But let's say I want to set up a new media. So I'm going to go into my easy media setup. I'm going to scroll down to a number 15 here and give it a name. I'm going to choose what type of media it is. If it is an adhesive vinyl or a banner, then the options to do an auto head alignment will be on the screen. If you're loading film, canvas, textile, or on the second page there's paper, those are all manual alignments only. And that's as easy as it is. Once, those, once the auto or manual head alignments are done, the media is ready on the printer to print. So the printer has an option when you load your roll, it will ask you if you want to keep track of the length of media that's left on the roll. And this is where you can check how much you have left. So you can have it print how much you have left, you can have it tell you, or you can adjust how much is left. And you can also set a remaining alert, which will tell you when you have between four and 50 feet left, depending on where you set it. And so say you've set up your easy media setup, but you realize that you need to make some minor adjustments to your settings. This is where you can go in your customized settings. And you can choose your media type. You can change the name. Obviously I wouldn't want to keep it as A, so I would change that. Media type, that's going to actually change the adhesive vinyl, banner, paper, etc. So that will reset all of your settings from the easy media setup. So only choose this when you want to fully change everything. 
media just just like before you can do auto or manual if it's a final or a banner and if it is a anything else you have to just do a manual. So next we have advanced settings. And as you can see in here, we have a lot of options in here. That's just a lot of minor little things you can change to really increase and fine tune your printing. I'm not gonna go every, over everything that we have in there today. If you have any questions on any of the advanced settings or you feel like that's something that you may need, feel free to give us a call at IT Supplies and talk to one of our technical support specialists. So the next button is our maintenance button. I do want to emphasize we have a QR code here that you can scan and actually watch videos from Epson on how to do some of these maintenances. So I'm just going to touch on these briefly. The most important one, and obviously the first one on the list here, is the nozzle check. That's something you want to do every single time before you start printing. If you notice your nozzle check has any broken lines or missing colors, then you would want to do a cleaning, which is the next step. And you can see we have a light, medium, and heavy cleaning. I would recommend running multiple lights before ever moving up to a medium or a heavy. And if you do run a medium or a heavy, I would also recommend running a light again afterwards. Next one is head maintenance. So about a month after you get your printer, if you haven't done any head maintenance yet, you'll see a little warning on your front panel that looks a little bit something like this to remind you that it's time to do regular cleaning. So you go into your head maintenance and you wanna go down to regular cleaning. And what this does is it begins the mode where the print head's going to move over to the other side of the printer to allow access underneath. And then it also allows access to your drying caps and your flushing pad to do a cleaning on those on the right side here. Once that's completed, that message will go away. If you notice that it's very messy in there and you do a lot of printing on a daily basis, I would recommend not waiting until you see that warning and actually do it more on a weekly basis. Next one is replace ink bottle. If you empty your waste ink tank or put a new waste ink tank on the machine before it tells you to, then you can just come in here and that replaces or resets that timer on the front panel. Replace parts is how you replace your head maintenance kit, which includes a flushing pad, two air filters, and a wiper unit. And then we have other maintenance. The one I want to touch on here is for the S8600 and S8600L, there is a change color mode option, which allows you to go from a cleaning cartridge to white or metallic silver, or you can go from those two colors back to a cleaning cartridge. And that's how you begin that process. If you notice your printer is squeaking, you can also grease the carriage rod. There's a kit that comes with the printer to do so. And I'll briefly touch on head washing and pre-storage maintenance. Head washing is a very last resort head cleaning where you've lost nozzles and or possibly even a print head. And that's kind of a last resort, so I wouldn't recommend performing that without calling a technical support before that. And pre-storage maintenance puts the printer into all cleaning cartridge mode. So if the printer is gonna be sitting for a long time, longer than a month, without use at all, possibly even turned off, I would recommend putting it into pre-storage maintenance and just replacing all of the inks with cleaning cartridges so you're not gonna damage your print head over time. Next, I'm gonna go into the temperature. You can see we can start a preheat, which will bring it up to the temperatures that we've already predetermined ahead of time in this venue, the heater temperature. And again, we have our roll in the back. That's our preheat, our in-print heat, and our post-heat. You can also change drying time per pass. So if you need to slow your print down, you can actually increase the drying time by changing this. And after heater feed, there are two modes you can select. By default, it's going to roll the media back into the printer to prepare for the next print. But if you choose mode one, it will leave the print as it's finished and you can cut it right off without it rolling back first. So you won't need to choose the feed to cut position button. I'm gonna to briefly touch on the menu as well. So like I mentioned before, the menu button has all the options on the front panel you've already seen. These are just shortcut buttons up here. So media setup is, is this button right here, printer setup, and then maintenance is this button right here. So I'm gonna go into printer setup here. Most of the options in here are just Again, sort of like the advanced settings in the media setup, just kind of fine tuning your printing. But the one I do want to touch on is on the second page here, and that's called head mode. And head mode is an option that's only on the S8600 and S6600 lines of printers because they do have two print heads on, on the inside. If you have an S4600, you will not have a head mode option. So say you do a nozzle check and you notice that one of your print heads is starting to go out or you're losing colors and, and doing cleanings and cleaning around the print head just isn't bringing it back. You can turn off that head and go into one of the other one of the other two heads. You can turn off the head that's having a problem and just use the other head, which will slow down your printing, but will also allow you to keep printing while you wait 
for a technician to come out and replace the head that's not working. And I also want to touch on sleep mode. You can choose in here how long you want to wait until the screen goes to sleep. If you have any questions on these or the advanced settings or anything at all, just give us a call at IT Supplies. Thanks, Mike, for taking us through the different functions on the Epson S-Series control panel. We hope this video helps you navigate through Epson's settings to make the best quality prints on your S40, S60, or S80 printer. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and give us a like. We'll catch you next time.